Hey everyone, Hunter Hodes here with the Locked On Penguins podcast. Uh, a much later recording than I would have liked. I had to just get my notes together um, and everything. The Penguins, they fall tonight. Their winning streak ends. They lose 4-1 to one to the Nashville Predators. A game that, you know, honestly, the Penguins, I, I, I thought they played pretty well. But, you know, we're going to get all into this recap coming up right after this drop result. You know, obviously, a whole bunch of news to get to when it comes to the Penguins. So stick around for that right after this. Your Locked On Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO. Arsenal Penguins, of course. Thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, rival low prices, all the parts your car ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Um, as you can see here, for those that watch on YouTube, I actually took the liberty and cleaned up uh, this my you know my recording space um I got tired of honestly it looked just looking like complete shit so um you know maybe outside of the uh, the co over there my work laptop and maybe my dog's toy uh, I like to say it's pretty good but you know the Penguins they fall tonight four to one to Nashville and honestly I'll say this right out of the gate I have no problem with how the Penguins played tonight none really whatsoever they outskated the Predators to death um you know Nashville just kind of reminds me of the Rangers. Um, in, in a sense, it's just, you know, they get carried by their Vesna Trophy goaltender. Um, and it's not going to be long until UC Soros wins the Vesna Trophy. Um, look at it tonight. So, natural stat trick at 5v5, the Penguins had 62% of the shot attempts. In the third period alone, the Penguins had 81% of the shot attempts. Going to scoring chances, the Penguins overall at 5v5, 67% of the scoring chances for in the third period. 90% of the scoring chance at 5v5. Go to high danger. Overall, the Penguins led 9-2 to two at high danger, had 81% of those chances. They only, the Predators only had two high danger chances that entire game, and they still won 4-1. to one. Penguins had f- four high danger chances in the, in the third period, none for Nashville. Now, going to the expected goals for Penguins had 73% of the expected goals in this game at 5v5. In actual, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2.4 expected goals for 0.88 for Nashville. And the Penguins were outscored 3-1 to one at even strength. Well, what can you do? I mean, I'm, ser- I'm serious. I mean, you honestly just have to tip your cap, uh, you know, to UC Soros for carrying a bunch of corpses around. And that's exactly what he did in this game tonight. Um, he was by far the best player on the ice. He, he makes it look so easy. He's not a big goaltender. Hell, he, he's barely even my height, and I'm six foot one for God's sake. You know, he's he looks like he's five nine, five ten out there. But you know, his, his lateral movement is so good. He looks always so poised. And that the only goal that he gave up um, was just a beautiful Jake Gensel goal that he was just so I guess deceptive. You know, it looked like it could have gone in any number of places, and Jake was able to creep down to that spot, you know, near the circle that, you know, a lot of Metro teams have kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, they've kind of like, they they, they know that he's done that so many times, so they take that away. But, you know, not a team like Nashville, who obviously doesn't see the, the Pittsburgh that much, but, Pitt, you know, Jake was able to have that really nice tying goal, at least for a bit in that second period. But overall, I mean, this was a total dominating effort by the Penguins. Um, now we go to Money Puck. Look at the deserved to win meter. I always love looking at this thing, and usually it's pretty accurate. So out of 500 game simulations, the Penguins win this one 82% of the time. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just g- giving you what I have on my screens right here and all the notes I have with the stats and everything. Um, at the end of the day, Penguins played well. Um, I'll get into their miscues in just a second, but... They, they easily should have had probably four to five goals in this game. They had so many great chances. You know, sometimes you run into a goalie 
that is just really good. And, you know, I know I use that a lot sometimes. Trust me, I get it. Um, it's definitely overused by other people. But in this one, it is very, and I mean very easy to say that they got goalie because it was 100%. True. There is a reason why he is number two in the league right now in goal state above expected behind Igor Shesterkin. And he is going to be a Vezin Trophy finalist. In my opinion, he deserves it. Um, Nashville has honestly not even been playing that well lately, but he's been the biggest reason why, you know, the Predators have been staying in a playoff spot. So um, just a really great performance from Soros. Um, it was really unfortunate that the Penguins um, – no, they, they weren't able to cash on on their chances. And, you know, Mike Sullivan decided to put Brian Rust actually back on the Evgeny Malkin. He wanted to switch the lines up a little bit. So Evan Rodriguez was at right wing on the Sid line. And, you know, that top line with Jake and Sid did not miss a beat with Evan Rodriguez there. Um, no really goal differentials. It was a wash because they were on the ice for one goal for, one goal against. But they are on the ice for 15 shot attempts for, six shot attempts against, 86% of the expected goal share, um, that comes courtesy um, of natural stat trick. Going to more, um, not the, not this one. Oh yeah, Penguins forward lines here. Um, you know, all the lines were actually pretty freaking good. The Heinen, Malkin, Russ line, even seventy percent of the shot attempts. They were also on the ice for if I can find this here, seventy one percent of the scoring chances for the the Gensel one was on the ice first, eighty six percent. Of the scoring chances. Heck, the fourth line of Zahorna, Carter, and Kapanen actually had you know, 54% of the shot attempts, 71% of the expected goals. Here's a fun fact for you all. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. Every single Penguins line tonight had an expected goals for percentage of 70% or higher. What, what can you do? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm laughing about it because it's just, it's sick. I mean, what, what more do people want the Penguins to do? in these kind of games. I mean, I saw some takes that they're being pushed around. I mean, I don't really buy that at all. They badly outplayed Nashville in this game, and they're still playing good hockey. It was just, again, you know, one goalie was great. The other one was not so great. That happens. It's hockey. Um, you know, this honestly kind of reminded me of a game from the 2017 playoffs for the Penguins where, you know, they got outplayed most nights, but they were still finding a way to win because they were getting great goaltending. You know, that was Nashville tonight. They got badly outplayed. Penguins were skating them right out of Nashville into all the bars downtown because I know Bridgestone Arena um, is right by the, all those bars. But, you know, they just couldn't make anything up. You know, just like how Matt Murray was 937 in 2017, you know, UC Soros tonight was, you know, w w way higher, I should say. The 937 years, probably, probably around like 950 or 960 or something like that. I mean, he was just, he, he was ridiculous. Um, You know, even the Boyle, Bluger, Simone line were on the ice for 66% uh, of the shot attempts. Um, scoring chances wise, they were on the ice. You know, that, that was actually the only negative scoring chance line, 40% of the scoring chances at even strength. I mean, the, the, the line, the four lines were buzzing. Um, And, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. The Penguins are now tied for second place. In the Metropolitan Division. Um, I'm going to get into some of the negatives uh, coming up here in the next segment. Uh, Crystal Tang, Mike Matheson, Kasperi Kapanen, and the power play. All that is coming up um, right after this little break here. But before I get to that, it's that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sporting sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. That is Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, we're back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. So, all right, praise them a lot, even though they lost in the first segment. Let's get to some of the negatives. Um, Mike Matheson and Chris Letang, um, they both were really not that good in this game. You know, Letang, definitely one of his, one of his worst performances um, of the season. Uh, I did not like anything that he was doing outside of a couple of passes. Um, you know, one of them, uh, when it's one nothing in the second period before Jake ties it, misses a wide open net. That's probably the third time in like the last three or four games that that's happened to him. This one hits the crossbar. Again, these are chances that he buries. Nine, nine, nine out of 10 times, 9.999 out of 10 times. But, 
for some reason right now, it feels like he's burying them one out of 10 times because they're not going in. Um, I just ch- probably chalk it up to bad luck. Um, on the third Predators goal, the breakaway one that DeSmith allowed, um, they both kind of just looked like collide. The puck was just sitting there. And then, you know, the Predators were able to take it down on a breakaway. And DeSmith, I think, made himself a little too small. But that was just really bad defense. Um, they got to communicate better there. I understand you're trying like a new pairing because Brian Dumoulin has been maybe not himself these last few games, and Mike Matheson has been playing good hockey. But I still think the Dumoulin Latang pairing is better for Pittsburgh than Matheson Latang. And trust me, I, I've seen the underlying numbers; they're pretty decent in a small sample size. But I, I just I, I don't like Mike getting these top pairing minutes. I would prefer him to be on a second or third pairing, either with John. Well, you know, we tried that last year, and that didn't really work out that well. Chara Riedel, you know, they always have a fine pairing just because, you know, I'll always say this on the pod, you know, Matheson's kind of like that running gun guy. He's, you know, that one man zone entry, but then, you know, Chad, he's, he's kind of like that defensive stalwart where, you know, he can cover for his mistakes if he makes mistakes and, you know, he's, he just plays a much more safer game. And that's why I think they complement each other so well. I just, you know, when you put two players on the same pairing in Matheson and Latang, who are both very, very high risk, I would probably say Matheson is much more high risk. Um, you're more prone to get burned. And we saw that tonight with the third goal. And again, you know, I don't really, I didn't really like that goal from Casey to Smith. Um, thought he looked way too small in net there. Um, it, it, at least in my opinion, um, you know, he, if he made himself a bit bigger there and actually was more aggressive, I think he could have saved that. And, you know, it wouldn't have been um, a two goal deficit uh, going into the third period. You know, this first one, I'm not really going to blame him for that. Second one was off of a deflection. Um, it's definitely annoying that it came from the point. Um, you know, I feel like he's sometimes prone to those a little more often than some other goalies. I mean, he's, I'm not going to say DeSmith played bad. I mean, I don't think he was the main reason they lost. Again, I didn't really like the third goal, but you know, with way, the way Soros was playing, I mean, do the Penguins even score if it's still 2-1 going into the third for the rest of that period? Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, you know, probably not, um, honestly. So, um. I'm not, I'm not really going to criticize DeSmith too much. I just, again, that one goal, that third one, um, did not really care for. Um, de- it was definitely frustrating that they gave up a goal um, with about a second left in the first period. <laughs> it's funny, you know, I, I'm watching the game. I'm going to feed my dog. I'm at eight seconds. I face off. I'm like, all right, you know, just going to go take an early intermission, come back from doing that. And, oh, they tied it up. And I had to watch the replay. And I'm like, Okay, I had jotted some notes down. And I think the main reason for that, the lost face-off, that's not good. I know people tend to, I guess, overrate face-offs. But that one there, you know, can't lose that one in that situation with such little time left. And uh, Dominic Simone lost his man um, on the left side. If Zach Aston Reese is probably on the ice, I don't think that happens. Uh, Aston Reese, for those that missed it, um, is out with a non-COVID illness. Maybe it's the same one that Brian Dumoulin gave him. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, but I just, I feel like he, he let that pass go cross ice and, you know, n- no goalie is going to save that. Um, just a, you know, piss poor defense there towards the end of the period, you know, where, you know, again, who knows what happens if it is zero, zero going into the second period, you know, it's, it's a completely different game. Um, you know, it, it looked like at first that it maybe was scored, um, after the, the horn blew, but it looked like it, w- it was with about 1.5 seconds, um, that, you know, that, 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 that uh, excuse me, Nashville scored. So, you know, just can't, can't lose a face off there. Um, second one, again, you know, shots from the point, you know, they're, they're usually, those are usually low percentage shots, but, um, you know, nice deflection there, you know, not really, not really too much to Smith can do. Uh, the power play was not good tonight. Um, they've converted now on what is it? One of their last 14, one of their last 15 chances. It's unacceptable. Um, there's that much talent on the ice, and I know there are there's obviously going to be cold streaks with a man advantage during any season for any team. That's just that's just how it is. Um, but there were times where um, I just thought they were too passive. Some of the zone entries were kind of eh. um, they weren't setting it up properly. I thought though, you know, there was one unit that you know they actually got quite a bit chances. Um, Nashville was kind of playing passive, I think, that time, and then I think they started to get a little more aggressive. But you know, there were multiple times where the Penguins could have gotten themselves back into this game with the man advantage and they couldn't do that. If that happens, you know, maybe we're talking about a different result right now. I'm not being negative towards the power play, but um, it, it was not good uh, to say the least. Just a really um, piss, piss poor effort um, on that, on that unit there. Um, you know, 
it was there was also a very scary moment i think for sandy crosby it looked like he took kind of like a skate right up here to the elbow and it, it saw like some blood dripping off his jersey it looked like it could have been like a really bad skate cut um one that silenced you on like a like a week-to-week basis thank god he was able to come back in um nothing seemed to be wrong or anything like that so you know glad that he is okay you know he was definitely getting into it i think at times with matthias at home um, the officials were, you know, whatever. I'm not going to blame the rest for something like this. I don't really, you know, that's that's kind of baby talk, um, a, a, at least in my opinion. I know I'm going a little um, around the horn here. Um, I'm trying to be as organized as I can um, with my notes, obviously, here. But, you know, I, I honestly, again, I, I just don't have, like, much else to say about the game that I've already said in, you know, in about the 16, 17 minutes that I've been recording this episode. I mean, at the end of the day, the Penguins played well. You know, there, there there were some miscues that cost them. You know, that end of the first period that can't happen. The breakaway to make it uh, three to one that can't happen for both DeSmith, Matheson for all three of them actually. DeSmith, Matheson, and Latang. And at the end of the day, those plus UC Soros playing um, out, out of his mind, that, those cost the Penguins the game. Um, luckily, the Penguins are back in action. On Thursday, I know they play a better St. Louis team, but the Penguins have also already beat St. Louis this year, and they're also not going up against UC Soros in that game. I think it's probably going to be uh, Jordan Bennington that they go up against. Um, coming up in the next segment, we're going to get to um, some weird Ben Sherratt rumors that I saw today, just going to maybe nix those a little bit. Plus, going to get to some of the best answers that I saw for our little Mattress Factory question that um, I got to ask on the Locked on Penguins Twitter account. But before I get to that, if I can find this here, save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why should you choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business who endure your selfers for over 20 years. The prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. You can go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how do you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection right below prices all the parts your car will ever need that is rockauto.com all right welcome back to another episode of the locked on penguins podcast i am your host hunter hodes remember to follow me on twitter at hunter hodes follow the show's twitter at lo I swear Penguins and I'm scrolling Twitter and I see that Anthony Rizzo goes back to the New York Yankees. Anyways, this is not a um, New York Yankees podcast. If you want to check that out, if any Yankees fans listen to this, go check out the Locked on New York Yankees um, podcast. Okay, so saw some weird rumors this morning about potentially the Penguins are closing on maybe getting Ben Sherratt of the Montreal Canadiens. A, that makes no sense. B, C, A, I think is my best way to say it. Um, the Penguins already have seven very capable defensemen that can play. I mean, Marcus Pedersen is scratched right now, for God's sake. They already have a surplus of D on the left side, and they're probably going to potentially move one to go get a forward help, which is almost five days now. Why in the hell would they be going out and getting Ben Chirot? This comes courtesy of Jimmy Murphy and Dan Kongurski of the, of the National Hockey Now Network. Uh, I'll say this. Um, they, I don't really think they're trustworthy. That's my opinion. Um, they have really never broken anything um, in you know the NHL world, you know. And again, I'm not going to sit here and claim I have because I haven't. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't have an ego or anything like that, and I don't claim to be an insider. But you know, those would be the last people I would go to. You know, that have actual NHL sources. I mean, I've you know heard from a couple of people. Um, just I, I'm going to I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm not even going to share that honestly on the show. But that, that's just it's my own thought that I will keep in my head that I've just heard from a couple people, but it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to shoot it down. I would be very stunned if that happens. Um, anyways, uh, getting to the last part of today's show. So ask some people about, you know, the mattress factory question. I don't know if I can get to the tweet here. Um, so, you know, they would love mattress factory would have loved, I uh, would have loved to have everyone's take on Sports are art. Asked everyone what their thoughts are. Um, Alan T. Yoder says, when I think of art, I think of pictures. There are certain moments when you can picture it in your head. Kunitz, Game 7, Eastern Conference Final in 2017. Game 6 of 2016 in the 2017 game, Stanley Cup Final. 
Also, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final in 2009. Some of these moments I would love to have as pictures hanging up in my man cave. Yeah, I mean, those are obviously all awesome moments. Alan, you know, Kunitz's winner. Um, you know, Game 6 where, you know, Sid just wills into victory and Matt Murray was incredible. Um, you know, Game 6 obviously down in Nashville with Patrick Hornquist's winner. Um, game 7 where they hung on for dear life. Uh, and of course the save and I have close to a photo up on my gallery wall up here. It's a, it's an old throwback with uh stall Malkin flurry and Crosby. That's it, I will always love that photo and I'll always love Jordan stall, but uh, I wish I did have a photo of the flurry save um, in my man cave. He was, it was just spectacular. I would love to have photos of all, honestly, all these moments. Um, and uh, Sam Alves, Alves says, you know, Art for sure and gave me a video. Predators get two. Yeah, this is the Ron Hainsey goal where he basically sidestepped two Predators players. I'm pretty sure one of them um, was James Neal. I think the other one was Mike Fisher, if I'm not mistaken. He's able to go down right after that, score the goal to, to put the game away for sure. It was like 5 6 nothing at that point. That was game five of the 2017 Stanley Cup final against Nashville. I will always remember that moment. So, yes, that is definitely – an example of, you know, sports being art. And then uh, Jackson Hollister says more art with Chris Kunitz and nailing chemo team and in back in uh, game three in 2009. Honestly, as I tweeted to you, Jackson, that is one of the biggest hits that I have ever seen in my life. Um, he just absolutely railed team in there. Um, you know, on, another one that, you know, gets to me a little bit is when I think this was in the playoffs in 2012. The whistle had just blown, and Kunitz still decided to tee up a slap shot from the point, hits the crossbar, like where the goalie's like standing there, and they all came after him, and all the Flyers fans were getting jammed. I think Kunitz, it was just a, basically a spiteful shot. Um, I, I will always remember, that, always remember that. You know, he was not the biggest dude, but he was always feisty, um, and he could definitely lay quite a few booms out there. So I really appreciate all those responses. Stay tuned for something else regarding the Mattress Factory tomorrow on the Locked on Penguins Twitter account as well. That'll do it for this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. A little shorter episode today, but you know the team will be back in action on Thursday. I'll be back on Wednesday with another episode previewing that game in St. Louis. You know, who knows? Maybe the Penguins will make a trade on Wednesday. Who knows? You know, the market's been definitely a bit slower um, than normal this year, but That'll do, again, that'll, again, that'll do it for this one. Hope you all have a great rest of your evening. And if you're listening to this on Wednesday, look for an episode a little bit later in the day. Have a great one, guys.